Mmm, blackberry. Mmm, that's a snozberry. Oop, that's a pair of shoes. Uncle Jerry. What you doing, Craig? What are you doing? I'm eating a banana. Oh, uh, I'm just trying to stimulate the old olfactory bulb, jog some memories. Uh-huh. Did you know that our sense of smell is our closest sense tied to memory? Here, take a whiff. What the f Ugh, that smells horrible. Exactly. Your smells are never going to be the same as my smells. Oh, mm. that's interesting. Sure. To learn more about smell and this remarkable appendage, I talked to an expert on the subject, Elpana Singh. She's owner of the restaurant The Boarding House and was a longtime host on the restaurant review show Check Please here in Chicago. Also the youngest woman to ever receive the rank of Master Sam Olay. Samuel A. Samuel A. Samuel A. Samuel A. Samuel A. Could you explain what that is? Sure. So Samuel A. is somebody who specializes in the field of wine. We study the wines of the world and the libations of the world, and we help customers uh, select accordingly. Is there something natural you think that you have that you have like a, a better palate, or is it something you can learn? Well, uh, I've always been curious about smells and what have you, but I really didn't get into wine until I was like 18, 19. And I remember tasting wines and, you know, and I hear people go, oh, blueberries and peaches and bananas. And I'm like, where are you getting? Do they actually put blueberries in the wine? But our sense of smell and our sense of taste is uh, a direct link to our memory. And so what we smell and what we taste is basically sort of a collection of our past experiences in life. So what is this smell memory connection all about? Well, to understand that, we gotta talk about the brain and flavor, right Matt? Yeah, boy! Not Flava Flav, flavor. Though I'm sure he has good taste too in things. Everyone who's eaten food before, which I assume is most people, is familiar with the concept of flavor. But flavor is more than just the taste of food. Our concept of flavor is just our brain interpreting information from many different senses. There's taste, which is salty, bitter, sweet, sour, savory, boozy. That's my favorite, that's my favorite. Ranch. There's also texture and thermal sensation, like the heat you feel from a spicy pepper or the coolness you get from menthol. Most important component of flavor though is smell. All of these sensations combine in our brain to become flavor. But if our noses are on the outside of our faces, how do we smell things on the inside of our faces? And if we did, what, why wouldn't it just smell like, you know, blood and brains? Cause that's what's in there. Maybe that's what we're smelling all the time. Just like different types of blood and brains? Yeah. It's getting like gross. Like that's a sweet brain, mm. that's a salty brain, Ooh, that's, that's, that's chipotle brain. That's chipotle. What happens is, you know, the back nasal cavity is open, so all those aromatics go to our nose. If uh, you were to pinch your nose closed and taste the wine, you wouldn't be able to taste any of the blueberries and peaches. Because our sense of smell and our sense of taste are two different things. Despite the fact that smelling stuff is great, we didn't really understand how it worked until somewhat recently. In 2004, the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine, that's the whole name of the award, was awarded to Richard Axel and Linda B. Buck. They discovered a thousand genes in our DNA that are specifically coded for olfactory receptors in our nose. In fact, when combined, these genes make up 3% of our DNA. That's a lot. Yeah, I guess that's pretty significant if you think about it. Well, it's, it is a lot if you consider all the things DNA has to do. Where are you going? What are you, where are you going? What are you doing over there? You're at the wall. When you smell something, odor molecules go up your smell hole, or nasal cavity, and hit your olfactory epithelium, which is a thin mucousy membrane made up of millions of olfactory receptor cells that have tiny hair-like things that cling to molecules as they fly past. Smell crow. We have about a thousand different types of these receptors, and each one specializes in detecting a different small set of odor molecules. <laughs> and he just excreted some of those receptors just now. Even though our sense of smell isn't very good when compared to other animals. Dogs have over 40 times the amount of olfactory receptors that humans do. It's actually still pretty powerful. The average person can differentiate between about a thousand different odors. And if you practice, you can actually improve your smelling ability and activate additional smell receptors. <laughs> That may not even be the whole story. Biophysicist Luca Turin developed a quantum theory of smell that suggests that these olfactory receptors can actually detect the atomic vibrations of odor molecules. It's like we have a quantum computer in our noses. That's right, Craig. Different odor receptors could be theoretically tuned to different frequencies, giving us a virtual infinite amount of odors that we could detect in our nose. That's like thousands of little Scott Baculus quantum leaping into my smells. Oh boy. And my heart.
Once the signals from these odoreceptors hit our olfactory bulb, they are immediately sent off to other parts of the brain, like the amygdala, which processes emotion, and the hippocampus, which plays an important part in forming and organizing our memories. Because of the intimate connection our noses have with memory and the emotional parts of our brain, the sense of smell is able to trigger thoughts and feelings much faster than our other senses, like sight and sound, which need to be interpreted by the other parts of the brain first. Kind of makes a lot of sense when you think about it, mm -hmm. like how our sense of smell prevents us from eating a rotten jar of mayonnaise, for instance. Yeah, or if you're in a building it's on fire, your sense of smell is going to smell that smoke. It's going to send a message to your brain. It's like, let's get out of here. I don't want to get burned. I would still eat the mayonnaise. Yeah, I'd like, probably get burned. Right, but from an evolutionary standpoint, it, sure, smell keeps us healthy and saves our lives, but it also helps us enjoy the finer things. Yeah! Most of us are pretty good at, you know, tasting wine, you know, just drinking it. But what's really sexy about the whole experience is you're connecting to memory. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the romance of wine. You know, so the wine that you have right now is really just sort of extracting all of your past experiences. So when you smell a peach, you're not really smelling a peach, you're smelling a memory of a peach. You know, or when you're smelling what you think in wine smells like grass, it's the memory of grass. It's our interpretation from our past experience of what a blueberry is or what a plum is or you know what like a wet dog is or whatever it may be. So would you say that nothing really has one distinct smell? Nope. It's your interpretation of it. Huh. So my smell of a wet dog is different than your smell of yes. a wet dog. Yes. Okay. <laughs> when we smell a new scent for the first time, our brain creates a connection between that odor and a place, a person or event whatever's happening at that moment. It's a very personal thing. So that's why we like the tastes that we like? I think so, or maybe we don't like it because there's also bad smell memories. <laughs> yeah. When you hear something, not that hearing isn't very important, but when you hear something, it doesn't connect to your memory and to your sense of self as much, yeah. you know? But like taste and smell, it's just, it, it's the very definition of being human. That's, that's great. That, that, that might be the, good, the good ending line right there. <laughs> the very definition of being human seems like a bit of a stretch. What do you think, Matt? Well, yeah, I think there's other things that make us human. Like? Well, Such like as? breathing, sleeping, going number two. Touching things. Shark mm -hmm. Week. Murphy Brown. Yeah. Touching Murphy Brown. Mm-hmm. Very human. But if you think about you in terms of your sense of self, what are we but a collection of our past experiences and our feelings? Our sense of smell is what ties all of that to the present moment makes us complete. You smell. Yes, I do. Don't touch me. Don't smell me either. But how am I supposed to know you? I'm, I don't feel complete without smelling you. Your smell completes me. Come over here. Give me a big smell. <laughs> thank you to Elpina, and thank you to Matt's Pants. Up next, we interview blind author Beth Finke about what it's like to lose a sense. <laughs>